Hi friends, welcome. My name is Baron, and this is my channel where I talk about some book stuff. I'm the book Baron. Welcome in. So, um, today I feel like I look like a mean girl at a prep school for with this hair, but you know what? It's dirty, it needs to get pulled back somehow, so this is what we're working with. <laughs> today I wanted to talk to you all about, about my February TBR. This is super, super loose because there's a lot of releases that I'm really looking forward to in February that I'll probably want to pick up around release date, but there's also a lot of books that are just calling my name right now too. But with February being a bit of a short month, we'll see how much I can even get to, especially because January my reading has been a lot slower than normal. Hopefully work is going to let up on me this upcoming month and allow me to get to some more reading. A girl can only hope. Let's just kick things off. First things first, I want to read Fragmented Illusions by Marie Ann. So this is a standalone that's available on KU. It's an MMF dark romance and I think it's got some like suspense and thriller elements. The synopsis on this was a little bit vague so what I can kind of gather is our heroine named Fallon, she's attending college and she's really trying to be perfect. She's trying to be like the good kid, not make any waves, any of that kind of stuff. She's really just trying to kind of fly under the radar almost and be just normal. She ends up running into two guys named Solomon and Sebastian. And it sounds like they're like maybe into some mask stuff. So that'll be interesting. But they kind of notice that she's putting up this facade and that she's got something else lurking under the surface because kind of feeling that she's drawn to their twisted nature. So they're determined to kind of like push her and pull that out of her. So I want to read this because I am a Blackout Romance Book Box subscriber. And this was one of the books that we got. And honestly, there's a lot of Marie Anne's backlist that sounds really interesting. She just had a new release come out. And I just feel like, you know what I own this book this seems like a good place to start and just like get my feet wet with this author and kind of like figure out where they fit in in our romance genre. Next up is Tied in Leather by C.L. Manegan. This is on to you this is the second book in the Up in Light series so I read Below the Pulse last month. I'm reading the second book this month. I do recognize I'm going in reverse order, but like, would we expect anything different from me? Not really, expectations are low. This is about Cameron, who is Cherry's friend from Below the Pulse. Uh, Cherry's the heroine for that book. But Cameron's her really good friend, and she was in a fire about 10 years ago, and she really tries to put on a facade and cover up the wounds that she has. And she is going to a high cup. <laughs> She is going to a performing arts school and she is a bass player and she ends up connecting up with a guy named Tyler and he is a drummer and their music, it's speaking to each other. Oh my God, he just drank out of my cup. <laughs> Can I still use this? Is that gross? I'll probably still drink it. You know what? I guess we're sharing because I set it down and he went straight back for it. So can you maybe not sniff the water? <sighs> Whatever. Anyway, what was I talking about? Cameron and Tyler. That's right. So they have these kind of like haunted souls and they just really communicate and like connect through their music. But Tyler's also got his own secrets and he's really trying to keep those under wraps. And now we have sirens. Does no one want me to film today? The joys of living in a city. So anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, why I want to read this. So I want to meet Cherry's friends. Cameron and Tyler were like friends of hers from kind of like back in the day. So I want to meet up with them and kind of get the full picture of like who she is, especially because the second book in Cherry's duet is coming out this month as well. So I want to get to this one. But what I was saying about CL's writing is that she is really good at very quickly explaining people's body language, which makes it one super so easy to picture like how people have themselves positioned and also you get a very quick glimpse into their non-verbals which is like a huge part of communication in real life and I just feel like it paints a more holistic picture of like who this person is like if someone's always fidgeting with a ring like that puts off a different vibe, a different energy than someone that's sitting there and just like directly delivering something. It kind of helps communicate a lot of those emotions. Plus she can bring the emotional darkness and the physical like violence darkness. And I think she's, she's one of those authors that does like a really good job of balancing both. So like, I'm ready to get emotionally messed up. I'm ready to dive into this one. And honestly, like, I think it's a little bit criminal because this book and Below the Pulse have less than 200 ratings 
on Goodreads. This is criminal and I am jailing every last one of you until you read this. That's your restitution, your community services, if you will. These are so good. Everyone is sleeping on these. Like you need to read them, but also like check the triggers because like it's me. If, if there's not a trigger in the book, do I read it? No. Next up is Rivals by Jessica Mile, and this is a standalone that's available on KU. Just recently released. This is about some rival artists, but it sounds like there is a heavy emphasis on mental health and drug addiction. Auckland is the hero, and he's from a pretty rich family, but because he has chosen artistry and like that lifestyle instead of taking on the family empire, they've pretty much cut him off he's dead to them. So he's got a lot of anger and resentment. And then we have Revna and she has a drug problem. It sounds like she's probably using that to cope with some trauma in her past. So they're both dealing with quite a bit of darkness and, you know, kind of fighting their own demons, but they have a rivalry going on at their college or their art school that they're at. And they are both trying to win this competition. Basically, it, I think the prize is that you get to go to Italy and there's some recognition of your work, but they end up having to work together and they're both so resistant to it because like art's like their one thing that they feel like they both have. I want to read this one. I know that it's like pretty lengthy. I think it's like over 600 pages, but like rival artists, like there's something about artists that I'm always going to love in books and having a rivalry, it just sounds delightful. I, like I love more of that versus like an enemies to lovers. Give me rivals. I vastly prefer that because there's, then there's a reason for that tension. All the reviews that I was seeing are like, despite the length, they absolutely flew through. And not only that, the author is super, super sweet. She had a lot of issues with the release because Amazon is a stink butt. So I'm really looking forward to reading. Oh my God. Next up, this is another like newish to me author. I just started reading the Hollow Boy series and I am planning to continue. I want to get to The Blood We Crave part one and maybe part two. We'll see. I'm like addicted to these books and they're by Monty J. These are books three and four and you do need to read them in order. There's kind of like a revenge plot line that kind of getting built on and some background information. These are sort of like new adult, dark romance, thriller types of vibes. It reminds me of like what I wanted the Devil's Night series to be. This duet is focused on Thatcher and like all the other boys he has a ton of money and he is actually the son of a pretty notorious serial killer. It's kind of resulted in him being a little twisted with his sense of humor but also he's a serial killer too so like like father like son. Lyra is someone that we met in the first book and she's best friends. What is her name? She's best friends with the heroine from that one. They're like the two that developed the loner society. She is an obsessive stalker and she has had her eyes set on him. Like she just like shadowing him, can't stop, won't stop. And it sounds like his dad is responsible for her mother's death. So there's some like twisted complexity to this already. And there's this like copycat serial killer that has popped up. And so they're like kind of digging into that. But also I thought I saw somewhere and I cannot confirm or deny this because I don't know where I saw this, that he's training her to become a killer. I mean, this just sounds so good. Like I said, this whole series has been what I hoped Devil's Night series would be like, Four guys, they're messed up, they've got money, they're pulling dark shenanigans, and it's like on the darker melodramatic side, but like this is the perfect level of melodrama for me. I will say that the characters do read a little bit like they are older than they are. They're supposed to be like 19. They read a lot older than that. So it is, it does throw me off sometimes when they like talk about their age, but like, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I like it. And also Monty J's spice is hot. It's not like over the top, like wild creative, but it's different than the usual order of things that I feel like I get in a lot of books where I start kind of going, Oh, it's a spice scene. All right, next up is one that I actually intentionally didn't look up that much because it is a novella. So this is Sweet Girl by Jack Whitney. This is on KU and it's a novella and it's focused around Valentine's Day. It sounds like the hero is Cupid or like Eros 
And he has developed this app that he uses to kind of mock with like the love and lust of mortals. And he hosts an event on Valentine's Day as a part of having his app. The heroine, I believe, is a mid-sized gal. And I didn't want to read too much more into like what this was about. Because I was just like, this is just a fun little thing that I plan to read around like Valentine's Day. And just have a little bit of fun and get excited for the holiday. All right. Now, very quickly, I'll talk about the two books that I'm planning to read from my priorities list for this year. And one is Tattered Bodies by Shay Ruby. So this is the third book in the Broken series. It's got a lot of focus on mental health, drug use, and organized crime. So I don't spoil anything, just kind of like very generally, it follows Hallie and Zane. And they are both spiraling out mentally, but Zane really becomes obsessed with Hallie and is kind of almost like determined to like drag her down with him. Not intentionally, but like he's just spiraling out, kind of like grappling for anything to hang on to. And they know that they can't work together because they're both so messed up that they're like, we can't function as a couple because we're not functioning as standalone people. So they're just desperate to like get any amount of time that they can together. And it kind of results in things being really explosive and dramatic between them. But that's the focus of the first book. The second book, they focus a little bit more on them, themselves. It's still got a lot of romance and spice and all that. So don't worry about that. But it does take a little bit more of like a crime turn and gets like that kind of dark versus more emotionally dark. And then this third book, we did leave off on a cliffhanger. And so Hallie is in some trouble. And so I want to see that all get resolved. So I've been putting off reading this because I'm not ready for the series to be done. And also I was done with Shay Ruby's backlist once I read this book, but she's publishing something this month. So I was like, you know what? I feel safe. I feel safe to read something knowing that there's other stuff coming. And also I just don't want to get too far away from the series because like then I feel like I'll forget stuff. So I don't want that to happen either. The other for my priorities list is Comfort Food by Kitty Thomas. It's a standalone. I think it's on the shorter side. It's around 200 pages. So it's a dark captor captive romance basically it sounds like emily is taken captive and she is touch starved the main method that they're using to control her is not violent but actually removing human contact so as a result she is very touch starved and it's kind of messing with her head because they're not being violent towards her and also she just really wants human contact that really keeps her on keeps her on the edge of sanity so this one's sort of like classic i don't know it's on the older side for dark romance so it's one of those that i feel like i just kind of want to get some of these more like classic-ish ones under my belt just to see how the genre has evolved over the years because i'm, I'm kind of curious and it's not terribly long though people are still reading it even though it's on the older side I've heard a lot of good things about it so those are all the books that I'm hoping to read in February and it's good timing because a big storm just rolled in and everything just got really dark <laughs> so we lost all of our light let me know what you're prioritizing in February is there anything for Valentine's Day that you're hoping to read I know there's lots of little Valentine's Day novellas anything from your priorities list that you're um, wanting to hit up any new releases you're hoping to grab I want to hear all the things and don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I really hope that I see you on my next video. Bye-bye.